What is one player that you're most excited to see this season? Mm. Or who is that one guy? Uh, the obvious answer for I'm going to say the obvious answer is going to be Nasir or Kobe because they're the new guys. But I'm actually very excited to watch how Cameron John how Cam Johnson plays because I think he's probably going to be one of the most important players in this team because of how he can score the basketball and how he can shoot, but also how he can play defense. We didn't get to have great defense from Cam last year because he was hurt for so much. And I think he could easily evolve into our best scorer for this season. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to pick one of the obvious guys. I'm going to go with Kobe. Just seeing the way he's able to push the ball down the court, push up that tempo. Roy loves to run. It's, you know, he was missing his shots so far, and he's turning the ball over. But I think once he gets that confidence going, this guy is just going to be so tough to stop. And the reason why I love his ability to push the tempo is when you're playing huge games, say, you know, when you're playing that road game in Cameron at the end of the year, the toughest thing to do is when that crowd gets behind it, and the best way is if Duke hits a three, what's the best way to quiet that crowd? A very quick outlet, and Kobe can push it down the floor and score himself or find someone for a bucket within five seconds. That will quiet the crowd. If Duke hits a big three and Kobe does that, that's going to quiet the crowd. And I saw the potential out of Kobe to be a guy that can just be lethal when on the road to stop scoring runs. And if he just gains that confidence, slows down just a little bit when he's you know transitioning from about between the half court and the three-point line, he's a little bit loose with the ball. If he can just tighten that up a little bit, he's going to be a lot better. And if his shots start falling, you know, the the... the the roof is the potential, quoting Michael Jordan a little mm-hmm. bit. The ceiling is the roof for Kobe. Um, you, you have to be excited. You're going to have to match the pace of Duke because Duke's pace this year was has looked ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, they got a 6'9 they, man-child pushing the ball. 6'9 man-child, and then you've got R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish just flying down the floor with Trey Jones handling the ball. It's just they move really fast, and you're going to need guys like Kobe White to match that level of intensity and that level of uh, transition play that Duke has. Yeah, and then again, you know, we, we talked about, this is I think the third time we brought it up so far, just the depth. And if Kobe pushes the ball like that, that is a huge advantage for UNC just because they, they're so deep that, you know, they're not going to get tired, but other teams who, one, aren't used to that tempo that UNC plays at, and two, just don't have the pieces and the depth. Um, to to compete like that, it, it's going to be very tough for teams to stick around uh, with UNC for 40 minutes if Kobe is able to push the ball down the the court successfully, like we envision him being able to do as he gains more confidence. Seventh Woods is also going to be very important moving forward because I mean, if we're going to have Kobe pushing the tempo and him being young, we're going to need a guy who can effectively run the offense himself, and Seventh is just going to have to step up. He did not look good at all in the Stanford game. Like It was very ugly. He had a bunch of turnovers really quick. But I think uh, he pro- showed in some earlier games that he has worked hard this year. So I think if he can effectively be that second uh, unit floor general, um, it'll just be even more deadly for this team. Yeah, but I mean, I still see that being more leaky, I think. Yeah, when it, you know, if I'm just saying for a guard fast, yeah. that can push the tempo because I don't really, I don't know how fast Leaky is. I don't think he's yeah, been unleashed. Right. But the one thing I like about Leaky is that he's so tall, so he can so push long. it, and you'll be able to see the court really yeah. well. Where it's also a great defender travel. too, yeah. better defender than yeah. a lot of people give him credit for. Yeah, and like the the interesting thing too is Kobe's obviously a guy who's going to push the tempo with with the dribble and with his feet, but. You know, what's quicker than your feet? Coaches say this all the time, passing the ball. So you don't have to be a great ball handler to be able to be great at pushing the tempo. You can pass it up the court as long as the rest of the team's running. That's what made Lonzo Ball, or does make Lonzo Ball so great, uh, is he's able to find that outlet just way quicker than other people, and it's right in the, in the pocket, and then that guy is able to distribute. And that doesn't show up on the stat book. But that is a huge play. That's what made Kevin Love so great for years. He gets the rebound. He's able to outlet it 35 feet. And that's just, you know, huge advantages for offenses. But you don't see that in the stat book at all. You don't even get an assist. You don't, you know, they don't have hockey assists if it comes to that. So, 
you know, it doesn't have to be with the with the ball, and if Leakey shows that he can be able to do that, I think he'll surely take over Seventh Woods uh, as the season progresses. Because I, there's no doubt, I think right now, those two guys will be battling out for that second unit yeah. uh, to be to to run the point guard position, and because they played, I think pretty much the same amount of minutes. They played 13 for Seventh and 15 for Leakey, so obviously that isn't going to be the case. One of those, you know. One of those persons' minutes is going to go to the starters when they have to play 30 plus when it's an important game. So, only one of those guys is going to have a role, I think, come March or or a big role. 